Ladies and gentlemen, imagine a society where our youth are empowered to make responsible decisions about alcohol, guided by their families and educated through comprehensive programs. Imagine reducing the allure of forbidden, dangerous drinking and replacing it with informed, moderate consumption. Today, I stand before you to discuss a topic that has sparked debates, raised eyebrows, and yet remains a crucial issue in our society, the legal drinking age. Currently set at 21 in the United States, this law is intended to protect our youth. However, I am here to argue that lowering the legal drinking age to 16 could lead to a more responsible, safer, and healthier society. This may seem controversial, but let me present four compelling reasons why this change is not just beneficial, but necessary. Firstly, lowering the drinking age to 16 can promote responsible drinking habits through education and supervision. At 16, young people are still under the guardianship of their parents, and this crucial phase allows parents to guide their children through the complexities of alcohol consumption, instilling responsible habits early on. In European countries such as Germany, where the legal drinking age is 16 for beer and wine, Research shows that young people often learn to drink responsibly in a family setting. According to the European Sur School Survey Project on Alcohol and Other Drugs, countries with lower drinking ages tend to have lower rates of binge drinking among teens compared to the United States. So by lowering moderate alcohol consumption at home, we can foster an environment where drinking is seen as a social activity rather than a forbidden fruit that's devoured in secrecy. For my second point, lowering the drinking age can reduce alcohol-related accidents and deaths. How might you ask? By eliminating the lure of underage drinking and providing proper education and access to safe environments. In this current scenario, many young people drink in unsupervised settings, increasing the risk of dangerous behaviors such as drunk driving. A study by the National Institute on Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism shows that nearly 40% of college students report binge drinking, a behavior driven by the desire to consume alcohol quickly due to its illegality for those under 21. This consumption often leads to a lack of control and poor decision making. However, if we do lower the drinking age, we can integrate alcohol education into high school curriculum such as driver's education or sex education. This would teach teenagers about the effects of alcohol, the importance of moderation, and severe consequences of drunk driving. So with the right knowledge and the right legal access, young adults are more likely to make safer and more informed choices. Now for my third point. Aligning the dr legal drinking age with other responsibilities bestowed upon 16-year-olds underscores a logical consistency with our laws. At 16, teenagers can drive, they can work, and they can even pay taxes. They can also make decisions about their education and even face adult consequences for crimes. So if we trust them with these significant responsibilities, why not trust them with alcohol? The American Psychological Association highlights that adolescence is a critical period for developing decision-making skills. Allowing alcohol consumption within a regulated environment can be part of this de developmental process. And the alignment of responsibility helps in building a society that treats its young adults with consistency, fairness, and promotes a culture of trust and responsibility. Now for my last point. Lowering the legal drinking age to 16 can significantly decrease the number of DUIs and alcohol-related crimes amongst underage drinkers. Currently, millions of underage drinkers in the United States consume alcohol irresponsibly and in an unsafe, unsupervised environment. According to the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Service Administration, nearly 10 million young people aged 12 to 20 report drinking alcohol in the past month. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration also states that alcohol is involved in one third of traffic fatalities. 
So, underage drinking contributes to the statistic, as young drinkers are most likely to engage in binge drinking and then drive. So by legalizing this alcohol consumption for 16 year olds and providing education in a supervised setting, we can reduce the incidence of dangerous behaviors. And to back that up, a survey of young adults age 18 to 20 reveals that a significant majority have consumed alcohol without parental supervision. Now let's address a couple concerns that people may have. A common concern is that lowering the drinking age to 16 might encourage high school students to drink. It's crucial, it's crucial to address this issue with regulations and education. First of all, implementing strict no drinking policies within school grounds and during school activities is a necessary step. And also comprehensive alcohol education programs should be introduced in high schools, teaching students about the risk of alcohol abuse and the importance of moderation. Some people may also argue that the exposure to alcohol in younger ages could affect the developing brain. And research indicates that heavy drinking during adolescence can lead to impairments and developmental issues in the future. However, this risk can be mitigated through education and culture that promotes moderate drinking. Countries like Germany and Italy, they have shown with popper drinking and um, the right culture towards drinking, it's possible to have this lower age while not affecting the brain. So in conclusion, lowering the legal drinking age to 16 in the United States is a bold step towards a safer and more responsible society. Let us take inspiration from the countries that have successfully implemented these lower drinking ages and have witnessed positive outcomes. And let us trust our young people, educate them and guide them to make responsible choices. So it's time to rethink our approach and to create a culture where alcohol is not a forbidden fruit, but a normal controlled part of life. Together, we can build a future on our youth so that they are better prepared, better educated, and ultimately better equipped to handle the challenges of adulthood. Thank you.